In today's video, I am going to show you how to replace a hot end nozzle on your bamboo printer. So the first thing before we get started is we want to shut down our printer and completely unplug it so there's no power going to the printer in any way. Once we have it unplugged, then we want to go to the front cover of the hot end and just pull it off. Now there is a cable attached to that, so be careful not to pull too hard. Then you'll notice above the heatsink there are two small screws with a hex key. So go ahead and take your Allen key and just loosen those completely and then take them out. And just remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And just so you know, we're, we're going lefty. The next thing you'll notice, once the screws have been taken out, you'll notice some cables coming from the actual hot end. And what we need to do is detach those cables. So we're going to go ahead and just pull out each one, one by one. And some of them have a little tab that you can push down and pull out. Others you just completely grab onto and pull out. Now this might be difficult to grab, so you can just use like the end of your Allen key to kind of pry it out as well. And that's what I had to do because I couldn't get my fingers in there. Then you'll see there is a tiny little hook that is holding on to some of the cables. And we just need to free it from that hook before we pull the hot end off. Once we have those three cables free, all you have to do is wiggle the nozzle back and forth while pulling down and it'll come right off. Now I'm actually replacing this with the exact same nozzle because I was using some really bad filament and I got the nozzle all kinds of messed up. So we're going to replace it with a 0.4 millimeter hot end. So the first thing you want to do is open your box where your nozzle is and get all of the components to set them out because we are going to be using all of these because we're going to be taking the components off of that hot end and putting it on our new hot end. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the fan and you can see we have two little hex screws down on the bottom of the fan. So we're just going to remove those by taking those screws out. Now one thing that I find really handy is to have a magnetic bowl to be able to put all of my loose screws and bolts into when I'm not using them. And you can get these at just about any hardware store and I'll go ahead and I can put a link to one down below for you as well. But these are worth their weight in gold because you don't have any screws rolling around and that could be a bad thing. But once we have that off, we're just going to pull off the fan and set it aside. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing is taking off the thermistor and the heat sink. But before we do that, there is a little metal clip around the actual hot end that we have to remove. So I'm just going to take my hex key and kind of pry it off and it will, should just pop off once you actually get it spread open just a little bit. We're not going to need that one because we have a new one, so you can put that to the side. Now we're just going to pull off the heat sink, but if you notice that there is some filament buildup and I can actually pull this off very easily. And if this is happening to you, do not force this off. What we're going to have to do is go ahead and heat this up. So what I've done is I actually have taken some gloves and some needle nose pliers to be able to hold my hot end. Then I'm going to take my heat gun and go ahead and just lightly blow heat on this. And that is going to release that filament and kind of melt it away for me so we can pull off all of these pieces and parts that we need. And I'm just going to hold it there for a few seconds just until everything starts to warm up. And for me, once it was heated up enough, honestly just fell right off. Then I had the thermistor that I needed to pull out of the side of the heatsink. And all I did was just pull that out once the other filament was warmed up enough as well. Then I'm just going to set the nozzle aside. And remember that that thing is hot, so set it somewhere safe. Do not just set it down somewhere that, you know, could be dangerous. Now the next part is, is I want to actually clean this little heat sink because it has some grime and some filament on it. So I'm just going to take a plastic scraper and go ahead and just scrape it off. And I'm being very delicate with it because I don't want to damage this in any way. But I am pushing just a little bit to be able to get some of this residue off. And I'm also doing it to remove some of the old thermal paste that was there. Once I have it all cleaned off, you can see it looks a lot cleaner. Still a little bit of stuff on it, but that's perfectly fine. 
So now we're ready for our new hot end. And if you look on the nozzle, on one side there are little notches, and you can see these raised notches on one side right there. And that is where this heat sink is going to fit perfectly. So if you see those raised edges right here. So we're going to go ahead and just do a test fit to make sure everything fits perfectly. And you can see it does fit nicely. Then you're going to notice a little tiny hole on the side, and that is where your thermistor is going to go. And I am just going to make sure that I can fit it in there easily, and it goes in really nice. Now we're going to look at the thermistor, and you can see that there is just a tiny bit of filament still left on there. And most of it will just kind of break right off, but you can hit it with a heat gun if you want to. And that way it will soften up some of that plastic to be able to remove it easily. But all I need to do is make sure that it's going to fit in that hole on the side of the nozzle easily. Then, with the heat sink, you've got that little channel that it's going to fit into. Now the next part is, I am going to take some of this thermal paste, and I am going to squeeze just a little bit onto the side of that nozzle where the heat sink is going to be placed. Now this packet has way more than you'll ever need. So you're just going to have to squeeze just a little bit on here because a little bit is all you're really going to need. It is just going to really help with that transfer of heat to the nozzle. So you can see right there, that's how much I got on there. Now I am going to place the heat sink right on there and kind of smush it around to make sure I get that nice and distributed. Then the wire is going to follow in the same path as the thermistor. And when you're done, it should look like this. Now it is a little bit messy when it comes to that thermal paste, but don't worry, it's not going to hurt anything. So the last part, you're going to make sure that the little clip goes on the nozzle in the correct way. You can see these little ridges that match where the thermistor would be and you're just going to kind of push it on there and slide it on down. Now this is a snug fit because it wants to keep that heat sink and that thermistor set in place. So you just need to push it past the point of the nozzle. And then once you've done that, you are good. Now you might get a little bit of thermal paste on you, but it's perfectly fine. Just have a nice rag or something beside you to wipe it off. So the last thing we've got to do is reattach the fan to the hot end. Now you'll notice on one side we have no sticker and on the other side we have a sticker. Now the sticker is going to be facing the hot end and that is the important part here. So we're just going to grab those screws that we had from the fan that we removed previously and put them right back in the same position. And we're only using the bottom two holes for the fan. And all I like to do is just get it barely started in both of them, and then I'll go ahead and tighten them down once they're started. Because we want to be careful and not cross-thread this in any way. And remember, righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. This time we're going righty. And one other thing to just mention, you want to make sure that all of those wires are tucked nicely behind that fan in that little channel. Because if you accidentally get it crimped or something like that, that could be bad for those wires. So there we go. Now we are ready to install this hot end on the printer. Alright, so what we're going to do is make sure the wires are to one side and then start to wiggle it back and forth up into the slot where the hot end sits. And it should just kind of fit right into position. And you know it's there when you can see those holes show up. So we're going to take our new screws that we got with the hot end and go ahead and install those in those two holes first before we plug in everything. And it's also a good idea just to get both of them started and then tighten them down evenly. So don't just put one in and crank it down all the way and then do the other one. So you want to kind of draw them down together. And you don't want to over torque these. So don't do them super tight, just finger tight. Because this hot end is not going to jump out. Once we've done that, we're ready to start reconnecting. Now, if we remember that little hook, we can actually put those wires behind that hook again to make sure that those wires are secure.
Now I do recommend putting the smaller wire in first and then working your way up because some of the wires are a little more difficult to make it into that little hook to keep those wires secure. Then you want to start reattaching all of these connectors. Now the nice thing is is all of these connectors have unique shapes and they'll only go in the right hole. But also just make sure that you're putting them in the right way because there is an up and down part of this connector. So just look at it and make sure you are putting it in the correct way. Then the last thing is we have a little silicone cover we're going to just kind of push on to our hot end. And this is just kind of covering everything and protecting us. Because if we accidentally get a fail, this honestly is super helpful to be able to pull off filament. So you just basically move it around until it kind of sits in a good position. Then the last step is you want to take that face cover and then just reattach it with the magnets on the front. Now the last thing I recommend to do is go ahead and run a quick test because you want to make sure your nozzle is getting up to temp and that it's getting a nice flow to it. So I'm going to go ahead and print me a little Benchy and see how that turns out. Alright, so my Benchy is all done and it looks nice and clean and honestly it's just, it's, it's a perfect little Benchy. So that means my nozzle is working good. So if you're new to bamboo printers, I actually have a full series on how to use Bamboo Studio and I'll go ahead and put it right here for you. Other than that, I wish you guys a great day and I'll see you in my other videos.